Hey, what's up? This is AAR Shanto. Try This Dish Radio is making a comeback. You can download our podcast, and in a few weeks, we are going live on Spreaker. Be sure to follow us at facebook.com slash try this dish radio. Make sure you listen to me, AAR Shanto, and Destination Dairy each week as we bring you the very best food and chef news from around the world. Speaking of lunch, I wonder what the Swedish chef has up his sleeve. <laughs> A summons from the Board of Health, I wager. You can't stand the heat, you better stay out of the kitchen. No makeup, no script. It's Raw Travel TV. That's right, Raw Travel TV. This segment is sponsored by RawTravel.tv. Be sure to go there for time and listing in your area. That's right. Turn this down a little bit. Turn this up a little bit. Okay, well... <laughs> we're, we're winging it again, but we're trying to get there. Of course, you know, this is Try This Dish Radio, and it's all about the food, and we have a very exciting show today, (laughs) because this is one of the, this is a day that we're going to actually have a caller on our new system, and I'm very excited, because this is something that we've been wanting to do, and take full control of the show, and uh, this is going to allow us to do a lot of things, a lot of things, and it'll allow us to go out in the... uh, in the uh, field and do a lot of things. So what do we have? What do you have in store for us today, Miss Der- Destination Derek? What do I have up my sleeve? What's in my sleeve? <laughs> well, okay. We're going to kind of go back to the old format that we used to. Well, one of the old formats that we used to, where we had callers that called in, chefs from all over the world. Yep. And as many of you already know, we were heavily involved with the World Food Championship since 2016. Yep. And so we were there every single year covering it. Last, of course, this year, you know, what had happened there was it's pushed (laughs) to next year. So we have, we uh, haven't done a whole lot of food sport, but that's definitely a niche that we love to, uh, you know, cover because we do have lots of friends that are food sport competitors. I myself uh, was a sous chef for a couple of years in a row at the World Food Championship. So that was uh, interesting. Yes. So. I got to learn a little bit from from that side of it, which I, I did enjoy. And we're we're upset that we didn't get to have it this year, but they're doing some great things with the World Food Championships. And just a little sneak, we're going to have the CEO and founder of the World Food Championships, Mike McLeod, on in the next half or part two of this show. So you guys stay tuned for sure. But today, we have the actual champions this year of the World Food Championships. Miss Lydia Hadadian, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. <laughs> yes. Thank you for coming on. And I got to meet Lydia <clears throat> at the last World Food Championship. Well, actually, I went to the final table last year, and we got to spend some time together. And also in Dallas last year, we hung out a little bit because you were actually a runner-up <clears throat> in the last year before. So just right. give us a little bit. And Sean, you want to ask Lydia something before I get into it here? I know. I'm just enjoying the conversation. Believe me, I'll, I'll have something pop up here in a second. <laughs> you know how I am. <laughs> All right. Well, first off, you guys can find us on Facebook at Try This Dish Radio. You can email me at trythisdishradio at gmail.com if you'd like to come on the show. Now, Lydia, you can find her at her website, um, ethnictable.com. She has beautiful recipes in there and a little bit about her history and her winnings, too, as well. So, Lydia, tell us a little bit about how you got started, like, just with your passion for cooking. Well, my passion started very early on when I was young. And, you know, watching my grandmas basically raised me, and my parents were full-time working, and I barely got to see them. So my grandmas were home cooking nonstop. Like, it was all day. They would cook after school meals just for my brother and myself. And then they would cook an extra meal for the family, you know, when we gathered for dinner. So I just really felt that love, 
you know, from them. And I think the love really drove me to, to that passion, the love that they had through their food. So, you know, they wouldn't let me in the kitchen. So I, it was really a passion that kept burning inside of me <laughs> until I actually right. got married. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's cool. <laughs> and then you had to start then you had to start cooking for real. <laughs> and then for I other people. Yeah, and real. we hear this all the time. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. for real. For real. Lydia, what is the, I love it. What is and, your, Go ahead. What, I was going to just say where you were from. And yeah, and, and you were you were born and raised in in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yes. I was. I was born and raised in Brazil, São Paulo, Brazil, and my family comes from an Armenian background. Oh, so really, cool. it was a multi-ethnic experience because the school I went to was full-on American school. So I grew up, you know, with all types of influences, cultural influences. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I bet that I bet that reflects in your dishes. Oh my God, Armenia and Q- oh, well, yeah. I can't even, yeah. I can't even contain you myself. Check out her her recipes. Yeah, yeah. How can we? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, where, where do we need to go to see her recipes? I I need to. Yeah, I need some more. Yeah. Com- some more complex it's dishes. Ethnic, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. Oh, more than a tuna casserole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, y'all gonna clown me on this tuna casserole? I see. <laughs> what? Uh, Lydia, yeah, we don't want to know what's in there. <laughs> oh well, no, it came out really good. Uh, Lydia, what is your favorite mm-hmm. dish to cook or to come up with? Oh. Uh, how do you come mm-hmm. up with? Uh, how do you how do you come up with your dishes? Do you kind of have them in the back of your mind, and they just kind of progress over a certain amount of time, or or, or do you just kind of say, okay, I'm going to do this? How do you do that recipe? Well, you know, there's uh, my everyday dishes because I do cook. I would say six out of seven days a week at least. Uh, there's always food in our house, and that's why you know we get um, the what do you call it? those dogs that come from the mountains, those mountain <laughs> animals coming, they smell the food coming yeah. from our house. There's always uh, yeah. an aroma that oozes mm-hmm. out of our home. Everyday meals, you know, it just, I don't know. I think it's just like, it comes from that passion. It comes naturally. I, I look and see what's available in the fridge and the freezer and the pantry. And I don't know. I, I it's kind of like magic, I guess. Uh, not in a, you know, I don't know. I love it. I just really, you know, when you love something, it just comes naturally. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the hard part is the dishes. It's not the cooking. But then the, the actual contest, it's a different story. I, I can't say it's magic. <laughs> it's, it's more, there's a lot of effort, you know, and I do a lot of brainstorming and, and dreaming too, by the way, you know, dreaming and thinking, imagining. I think there's a lot of imagination in there too, because I want to, do something that, you know, is not out there. That's hard, you know, to find something that's new. Yeah. So, and, and yes, I do pray. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I feel you. And yeah. I was, um, yeah, and I was just going to say too, and when you're doing food sport, it's, you know, especially with the world food championships, like at the final table, we're going to talk about the final table that was um, in the Indy final table that, happened in the spring now basically you had to create three different dishes and then they picked and judged based off of those so you you know you can use your creative ability with that rest with those recipes but you have to use the ingredients too as well and do whatever recipe there that they you know want you to do what was the most challenging recipe for your final table Ooh. Yeah, definitely. I would say the most challenging was my second um, dish, which was the duck, the roasted duck breast. Um, oh. I had no experience right. you, know, cooked, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with a uh, roasting duck mm-hmm. before this whole final table. So I have to say it was a it was a great experience. And I could I, if you asked me to make a really nice roasted duck, I could make you one right now. <laughs> that- <laughs> a good one. <laughs> That is cool. <laughs> Did uh, yeah. wow. That's, yeah, but it was challenging. I it bet was it very was. Ended. Yeah, yes, duck is a I different have... meat to cook with, and if you haven't cooked with it a lot, you have to know. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Kind of like and lamb. Stay up cause you have to know how to do yeah. lamb, too. Mm-hmm. Well, we had to taste Greg Hardesty's chef's uh, Hardesty's dish the previous night and, re- you know, recreate it the following day. And I had an idea of, you know, possibly what it would be. But after tasting his, I knew I had to add more to what I had pre-imagined. So I stayed up until 3 a.m., you know, really detail writing that final recipe. And after I finalized every detail in my perfectionism, I literally was laughing for five minutes because I thought this is impossible to finish in one hour. <laughs> wow. I was laughing. I'm like, I look at my <laughs> yeah. husband. I'm like, yeah, you're like, <laughs> uh, I don't think this is going to happen unless a miracle takes place. <laughs> uh. Wow. Oh my God. Well, but, and, but, yeah. And I just want to tell, I want to tell our, I want to tell our listeners too, that just in case you're wondering the grand, the grand prize for the world food championships is $100,000. It's not, this is not like a uh, chopped liver cooking here. You guys, this is the, the, <laughs> probably the most, I get, I guess, food sport competition cooking out there you can get to. And I'm looking at your final recipe for the last round was that dessert. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Have mm-hmm. you seen that, Sean? It, it was a pistachio rose sugar cream pie. Uh, uh, okay. Stop the madness. <laughs> that looks beautiful. Mm. I'm still. <laughs> I know, stop I, the madness. I, I know we're just like. I'm oh, still going crazy over the duck. I'm still going crazy over the duck. I mean, oh it's my beautiful. Goodness. Oh. It's just beautiful. Oh my goodness. So mean, what's going on in your world now then? Uh, Lydia, yeah, Lydia, so are you going to comp- uh, you know, continue to compete or what do you got up your sleeve? Well, you know, this is the thing. I think competing is in my DNA. <laughs> I just love of competing. Course. And I'm sure I will get to a point where I'm going to say, you know what, it's time to uh, – you know, share some secrets <laughs> to competition. Um, I don't know if the the com- competition bug is out of my system yet because I really do enjoy it. No. And <laughs> <laughs> but what am I doing? You know what? Life goes on and I'm very busy. My life is extremely busy. Uh, you know, just really taking care of people that are around me. I have parents that are, you know, really needy and, um, you know, they're getting older. My dad's full time, you know, he's bedridden and I've got grandkids. One, I got three. Well, third one is on the way. Oh, um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I do a lot of, yeah. So, but cooking. Yeah, a lot of cooking, and well, we'll see. I think, yeah, I, yeah, I have lots, to, lots of cooking. Well, we got to take a really quick break. Um, well, we will be coming oh, yeah. back. Uh, we this, got to talk about yes. We got something good to talk about. Definitely. So this, this yeah, dairy. How can people can? I'll contact hold it us? over for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, you guys can email me at drythisdishradio at gmail dot com, or you just go onto our Facebook page, Try This Dish Radio, and message me there. All right, we shall return right here on Try This Radio. I'm still thinking about that duck. I might have to go to the Asian store and get me a duck. No, no. I may have to do that. Oh, no, here we go. Yeah. (laughs) I just got to figure out what I'm going to put with it. Maybe some wild green grain rice or something. Anyway, I'm salivating right here on Try This Radio. Hope y'all are too. We shall return in just a second. Yeah.
Are you experiencing the quarantine 15? Hi, I'm Ray Solano, pharmacist and owner of PD Labs Specialty Compounding Pharmacy. Fall is here, and we're waking up to the new reality to the new 15 pounds we gained. The time is now to take charge of your health and starting with a fundamental reset of your eating habits, activity, and yes, feeding your mitochondria, those energy power centers in our cells giving us the ability to burn fat. Mitoblast 2 is a unique blend of professional strength dietary nutrients designed to improve blood sugars and energy by restarting your mitochondrial engines. Every cell in your body needs powerful nutrients to keep your mitochondria activated. Regular exercise, low-carb diet is paramount for your mitochondria. Try Mitoblast 2 in order today by calling 888-909-0110 or pdlabsrx.com. And remember to enter Salem. The number is 888-909-0110 for Mitoblast 2. And remember, you have a choice in health care. No script, no makeup. It's all Raw Travel. Be sure to check out rawtravel.tv. That's rawtravel.tv. This studio is sponsored by rawtravel.tv. That's right. You can check out raw rawtravel.tv. We're going to have to have Robert on. So we need to find out what's going yeah. on when it comes to traveling. I don't, I don't, you know, at this point with the COVID, whatever the hell we call it these days, I don't know where I can go. I know I can't go to the Philippines. <laughs> I, I call mean, it a brewski. <laughs> <laughs> well, that my might, well, you that's know. my nickname. That's my nickname. That's yeah. funny. So we, we will. Have... You know, we'll we'll have um, we'll have him on and see what's going on in his world yeah. of traveling, and maybe we'll do a show on just. Well, that's foodies what, that we've had on before and just kind of catch up. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I also want to try to find out what's going on. I haven't heard anybody talk about the whole travel world. What is, you know, can I fly to Europe? If I can fly to Europe, I'm going to be stuck there, that type of thing, you know, because like you go to Europe and I go to Asia. And the last thing I want to do is get stuck in the Philippines for months on end. And like if we fly in, I don't yeah. know if they've lifted everything yet, but when we would. When this first started, if we flew in, we'd have to be quarantined for 14 days. Well, we're only there for 21 days. Right. So, you know, it's crazy. Anyway, back to the show today. Well, speaking of traveling. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, speaking of traveling, I'm going to bring up uh, Lydia's travel near and far. Now, she's she's won over 45 contests, maybe wow. even more than that at this point. And she's also been on the Cook versus Con show, so I definitely want to talk about that for just a moment, Lydia. So tell us, uh, when, when was it your Cook versus Con episode, and how did that all go down? Oh, Cook versus Con, yeah, that was pretty. That was one of the most intense experiences I've had. Um, let's see, what year was that? Um, it's in. It's in my. You, you could check that out on my website, and you could also. Um, probably purchased the episode for a dollar to watch what happened. I did make, you know, a Brazilian dish in there and that was my final round. I did make it to the final round and kind of don't want to give up what happened at the end. Should I, you know, do that and tell them who won for that? (laughs) Maybe it'll make them to just get that. Yeah. I watched the episode. Yeah. I I just watched the episode just to learn how to do the dish that you did. You know, some of my cooking I learned from shows like that. Yeah. Well, I I have to say my final dish was a Brazilian uh, stew. It was a fish stew, a moqueca, we call it. Mm. And it was pretty delicious. And um, Mm. uh, chefs, Chef Samuelson, Mark Marcus Samuelson, he he loved it. He said, "Wow, this is really good." And you know, things like this really help me and give me that confidence that I need to, you know, jump up to the next level and really learn a lot. Every experience is a learning experience, so I I really uh, treasure every single, whether they're tough or not as tough. I learn from every single competition. Which one would you say is hard to do? Your standard competition or competition on television? And I know that that particular, at least some of the Food Network production, they like, it's a whole day of this. Mm-hmm. 
And I mean, I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> You know, I I have a bit of adventure in me. And of course, you know, because I think everyone that competes has certain risk and adventure and um, personality. But I do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. Uh, It's an adrenaline rush. When you do it from home and you prepare your dish and you take a photo and all that, that's awesome. I, I enjoy doing that, too. But when you actually go somewhere, and especially with Food Network and mm-hmm. even with World Food Championship, I mean, I think that's huge, you know, oh, yeah. to be on national television and all that. You know, that it, it's an adrenaline run, a rush, not, and a run. Yeah, it's a run and a rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a rushed run. <laughs> wow. So it's so much fun. I, I love it. And Yeah. Yeah. Go for and it. you guys can go actually to World Food Champions. You can go to World Food Championship YouTube page and watch mm-hmm. the Final Table Indie episode. It's actually on there. It was aired on the Cooking Channel, which I did not get out here in the middle of nowhere. I was so bad that day. I had tried every way I could to, to I watch that, so I had to watch it after the fact. But yeah, if you guys want to check out World Food Championship. That final, uh, they have all kinds of videos, but just go check Lydia mm-hmm. out there for sure. And, we'll, and you can go back and watch some of the older, older videos. Yeah, we'll, we'll link, link that up on our, on our uh, podcast page as well. Yeah. We'll have, share all those links on our podcast page. We've got about uh, a little bit of over eight minutes left. Um, Lydia, when you, what, what inspired you to actually start cooking? Uh, in competitions, was that it? Was it one minute? You, was it one yeah. day? You were sitting there and thinking, <laughs> "I just got to do this." You know, I mean, like I'm taking <laughs> pilot lessons right now, and I will probably get my commercial license. I'm too old to fly commercially, but it's always <laughs> been something I've always wanted to do. So, did, did that happen for you? Was it something you wanted to do, and then just just got into it? Well, um, you know, actually, it, it just kind of happened by I don't want to say accident because I believe in providence but it just happened one day when Mm -hmm. I was searching the web you know this is about 10 years ago and I somehow uh, happened to cross a contest it was an outdoor cooking contest this is 2010 and uh, you know just kind of doing Mm -hmm. I think homeschooling research and I crossed, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know such thing existed as cooking contests, mm-hmm. uh, you know. And I thought, ah, you know, why oh. not? You know, why not? So I, I said, that was my first win. You know, I have 48 wins. And my first win, so not every win is a $100,000 prize, right? So my very first one, my win was an apron. <laughs> uh-huh. I still have that apron. I <laughs> love that apron. Wow. Exactly. And I, yeah, Aww. I made a little uh, grilled uh, chipotle chicken, chipotle pizza, and I won at that contest, at least uh, in a placement. And it really wasn't until 2015 that I, I, I started winning more contests. It was, I won seven in between 2010 and 2014. And then 2015, that's wow. when things kind of started going. Yeah. Wow. So, that's, yeah. That's and cool. I do. And I, I want to bring up also about your husband and how supportive he is of you. I know everybody is always like, oh my gosh, they're so precious together. I remember mom and I ran into you guys at Bucky's on the way back from the right. final table in New Orleans. Remember, that was fun. And, mm-hmm. you know, so I want you to just give a shout out to your husband and, and just, just give him a little love in there for us to hear. Oh, Oh yeah, he he's got all my love all the time, and you know he is such a. From the first day I met him, he has always lifted me up, always encouraged me, always you know um, helped me to be more confident and to go for my dreams. So I I have to say you know I couldn't do it without him because uh, it's so easy to give up you know in this kind oh, yeah. of a world of you know it, it's not easy you know you you lose more than you win. Yeah. If, I, if I won 48 contests, that means I lost probably four times as many as I have, you know, submitted recipes. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you suddenly, you know, start and win everything you enter. So you have to keep going. You can't give up. And that's where my husband comes in. And, 
you know what? He's not. He, well, he actually cooks now, but he's not a cook. But he's really gone out of his way to sous chef <laughs> for me. And I oh, think, you know, cool. one thing is our love yeah. is something that I really shout out. I think that's more important. And, you know, it, it comes out in the food, I think. <laughs> you know, I, I, I agree with you. Me and it my does. wife, me and my wife do that. I, mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm her sous, sous chef. She's from the Philippines. So like, mm -hmm. and here's the funny thing. I say complex dish when it, with the tuna casserole. I actually made torta yesterday, which is a Filipino <laughs> dish. And I, and yeah. what, what I'll do sometimes is I'll take a, a Filipino recipe and I'll, I'll kind of play with it a little, little bit to add mm -hmm. a little bit of different texture to it, and she, and she's my biggest feedback because I learned how to make it from her, and she's my biggest feedback because she when I, when she says, "Oh, this is good," I know I've done something because it's a traditional mm -hmm. dish that she's used to eating with eating, and I'm not. So, I I, uh, I definitely understand where you're coming from when you when you cook with your husband. Mm -hmm. That that shows real love in in the dish and the relationship. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm willing to hear out when well, he says, "Yeah, I don't know about this." I will, you know, listen to that and not go my way. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me and my wife. She's the same way. Yeah, and I, I listen mm -hmm. to her too. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. that's really good. It's, it's. I, I think food brings that out of people. I think that brings mm -hmm. it out of people. Well, we always, yeah, yeah, we always, you know, do talk about that. How we've always promoted like cooking together with your family and getting in the kitchen and creating things and how it does bring families together. And that's actually one of the mm -hmm. premise of when we started this show five yeah. years ago was to help people learn how to cook yeah. and just share people's experiences. And nine times out of 10, most people that we've had on the show started cooking because their grandma or their mom or their dad, you know, got them into cooking. And so they developed a passion for it. And so you guys are just the perfect, oh, you're just so cute. They're just so cute together, too, you guys. It's just awesome. But And, and doing, doing food sport, though, requires a team. It's not just one person, mm -hmm. especially when you get at that certain level that you are at, Lydia. You know, you mm -hmm. it takes a lot of effort. And so it's just, I want to congratulate you guys on your win. Thanks. And Thank I can't you. wait to see what else you have, have going, up, going on next. Tell everybody. Real quick, where they can find you on social media and your website. So, yeah, you could find me on Instagram at Lydia Cooks. Uh, that's the handle. And then uh, my website is uh, ethnictable.com or Lydia's ethnictable.com. And I'm planning on adding some more recipes and videos, but uh, we'll see what's next. I'm Looking forward to seeing what's going to happen, too. So <laughs> um, it's definitely going to have food in there. So whatever it is, food is involved in the future. Food's involved. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you. It always is. It always is. So I, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We're, getting, we're, we're about a minute out before the show is over. But I want to thank okay. you. And congratulations on all your wins. And, and I hope you... Uh, keep cooking, definitely. And I look forward to seeing you. you again. And, and maybe once, uh, 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 what, what do you call it, Corona? <laughs> yeah. The brewski. <laughs> Hopefully when the, the brewski. brewski is over, we can, <laughs> we can. because um, I know they were having, the, I'm assuming they're going to still have the World Food Championships in Dallas once all this is over with. And that's where we're based mm -hmm. at. So I look very yep. forward to uh, to seeing you again and, and uh, yes. just keep cooking. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Such a honor. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. On your show. It's awesome. Well, we're definitely, you're, you're definitely going to come back on for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. When you win next time. <laughs> I knew you were going to win. <laughs> so Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Destination <laughs> Dairy, how can people reach me, reach us, not me? We have 41 seconds. Reach you. I don't know. I have, I've been trying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So you can find us on, you can find us on Facebook, Try This Dish Radio, uh, Twitter, Try This Dish Show. I also have an Instagram, Try This Dish Radio. Email us at trythisdishradio at gmail.com if you'd like to come on the show or share a recipe. Absolutely. Thanks, Lydia. Thanks, Lydia. Thank you. Just hold on for us. And uh, we're right at the end. So next next part two of this, we're going to have Mr. Mike next McLeod. Next time. Ooh, part two. So right here on Try This Dish Radio. That's right. Y'all tune in.
Always remember, cook something great. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.